This video looks at the Schwarzschild space-time interval and goes through the process for determining various proper distances between two given events. It shows how proper time and coordinate time are related in a Schwarzschild space-time. It also shows that coordinates are not the same as physical measurements, and so coordinates do not have direct metrical significance. So the Schwarzschild uh, line element is given by this object here. And let's consider now two events occurring at the same coordinate time, but at different spatial coordinates, so that dt is zero. So they're going to occur at the same time. So event one has coordinates t, r, theta, and phi, and event two has t, r plus dr, theta plus d theta, phi plus d phi. So they're occurring at the same time, otherwise the spatial coordinates are different. Now, the space-time interval is now given by, with dt being zero, that first bit drops out, and we're left now with just this space-time interval here. All right, let's have a look at proper distance. So here's our mass, the source of the Schwarzschild space-time, so some mass m, and we have two events that are separated only in the radial direction, so here we have dt, d theta, d phi is zero, and then the space-time interval simply becomes just this object here. The other parts drop off, the dt part, d theta, d phi drop off, we're left with just this space-time interval here, just the radial part. So here's event one, tr theta phi, event two is t r plus dr theta and phi. So these two events have the same uh, time coordinate, the same polar angle, same azimuth angle. They just differ in the radial direction. Alright, so here we are again. Now event 1, event 2, just looked at from a different perspective. And the coordinate difference dr is not the physical distance between the two events, so we need to be careful about that. And we'll find that throughout this video, the relationship between physical measurements and coordinates. So the relationship between the coordinate interval dr and the proper distance ds is this object here. It's just the square root of what we had on the previous page. So ds, the proper distance, is dr, the coordinate element, interval, over the square root of this object here. So the proper distance is the physical distance between two coordinate points as measured by measuring rods placed between the two points. That is what the proper distance is. It's a physical distance, and it's this object here. It's not the coordinate r. <coughs> All right. Now let's consider two events that occur at the same coordinate time, and at the same radial coordinates, so that dt, dr is zero, and our line interval, our space-time interval, becomes this object here, this one. So we just have the angular part. Okay, now, what does that mean? Well, here's our original mass m, which is the source of the Schwarzschild field, the Schwarzschild space-time. There's our mass, the black dot in the middle there. And these two events here, they occur at the same time, they have the same time coordinate, they have the same radial coordinate, they just differ in the angular variables. And they sit on a shell, on a spherical shell, outside the mass m. So here's your spherical shell at coordinate radius r, and the two events sit on that shell, and that's what this diagram is trying to show. So right in the centre of that sphere is another little sphere, which is our the source of our Schwarzschild space-time, that these two events sit on out of a sphere on the surface of a sphere at coordinate radius r. Okay, we'll talk a little bit later about that. And so this element here, this space-time interval, is the physical distance between these two events. It's the physical distance on this sphere. So if we place measuring rods between them, then it would be this expression here would describe the actual physical distance ds squared. All right, now, now let's say we set dt, dr, and d theta to zero, then the space-time interval from the previous page simply becomes ds squared is r squared sine squared theta d phi squared. Here we are again, our mass in the center of our sphere, and now our two events have the same time coordinate, they have the same radial coordinate, they have the same azimuthal angle, theta, theta, they just the same polar angle, sorry, the same polar angle theta, theta, they just differ in the azimuth of phi and d phi, around here like that. So they differ in that coordinate. 
right? So they're sitting on the edge of the um, sphere, on the surface there, this event here, this event here, and the physical distance between them, ds squared, or the square of the physical distance between them, ds squared, is this object here. Um, let's go further, and let's now set theta, the polar angle, to pi on 2, so we come halfway down between the poles here, into the plane, into the, into the um, circumference, we're going to form a circumference along here, the equatorial plane, if you like, and ds squared becomes r squared d phi squared, ds is r d phi, and the physical distance, the actual physical distance ds between these two events at the equator here, so along the equator here, is r d phi, r times d phi, now from which we can calculate the proper circumference of the circle at coordinate radius r to b. Now, if we just integrate both sides here, we get the total physical distance of the circumference around the sphere there in the equatorial plane and that's the integral 0 to 2 pi r d phi which is 2 pi r all right so that's the physical circumference we place rulers around measuring rods around this um, sphere here along this equatorial plane and measure it it would be equal to 2 pi r now the physical radius of the shell that contains the circumference is not given by the radial coordinate, the physical radius, but by the proper distance ds that we found earlier. So just be careful about that. This circumference is a physical distance. This r is not. Now the Schwarzschild metric is this object here, but it's also equal to minus c squared d tau squared. That's an element of the proper time squared. Now let's consider two events occurring at the same spatial location but at different times. So dr, d theta, d phi are all zero. And this object here collapses down to minus c squared d tau squared is equal to the first part of the space time interval, this object here. d tau squared, and then both sides multiplying through by minus one, we get rid of the negatives. Um, divide through by c squared, get rid of those, and we're left with this object here. If we now take the square root of both sides, we end up with d tau is this square root of this object here times dt. Now the relation between the proper time tau, it's the time measured by a clock at the location of the event, and coordinate time t is, well, in this case in an interval, d tau and dt, they're related by this part here, this expression here, this factor. Now the proper time d tau between two events is the time that is measured by a clock at rest at the location where the two events occur. So that is in relation to proper time. Now far from the source mass m, proper time converges to coordinate time. So the limit as r here goes off to infinity. Well, both sides here we take the limit as r goes to infinity this just becomes dt. And so d tau and dt in far away from the source mass are equivalent to each other, they become equal to each other. Alright, and this means that near the source mass m, an interval of time d tau, such as the emission of a light wave, will be less, will take less time than that measured by a distant observer very far from the source who records an interval dt. So d tau is less than dt. And this relationship becomes particularly acute the closer to the source mass the time interval is measured. Now, a clock near a mass m will record an interval of time d tau between ticks. An identical clock, identical, very far from that mass will record the same time interval dt to be larger according to dt will be d tau divided by this factor here. Uh, so that points us out. Again and again we've seen that coordinates are not the same as physical measurements. Phys physical distances and times are not given by the coordinates. So in general relativity coordinates are not physical distances or times. That is, they do not have immediate metrical significance. So we need to be aware of that. The coordinates do not give us the physical measures of distance and time.
So take care of that. And we'll, there's other cases, we'll see that elsewhere. Uh, there's a separate video on the contravariant, covariant and physical components, the vectors, uh, on this channel. So you might want to look that up. Alright, and that's it.